war has returned to Europe. The two global superpowers appear at the brink of violence. Global geopolitics are in a bad state, but when we set out to make a video about the future of Earth, we stumbled upon something very upsetting, something that will change the world, but more specifically give us one of the greatest geopolitical challenges humankind has ever faced. And on that path, we discovered even more quite unique and interesting geopolitical challenges we will meet in the coming decades, which will dramatically change the world as we know it. So what is this geopolitical challenge that we stumbled upon? Well, it started with researching CO2 emissions and the whole global warming thing. As we already know, the drastic temperature changes will have far-reaching repercussions, and most worryingly, and what seems to be one of our greatest upcoming geopolitical challenges, this climate catastrophe will cause the biggest refugee crisis in history. The reason for this is that the world's poorest nations are incapable of coping with the challenges of the climate. Which makes sense, I mean, it's not just the planet getting hotter, it's also the increase in frequency of natural disasters. Nearly 1.2 billion people are therefore expected to be at risk of displacement by 2050, with 200 million migrating to a new nation. Now, unfortunately, the study doesn't differentiate between people with resources relocating voluntarily and refugees forced out of the nation by the consequences of climate change. And the proportion between the two is difficult to predict, but 200 million is a gigantic number. To give some context, the height of the 2015 European migrant crisis saw 1.3 million people reach Europe in a single year, while the peak of the US-Mexico illegal border crossings was 1.7 million people in a single year. This is so much bigger than that and will have cascading consequences across the world. Many will tragically die on their journey, host countries will see their resources drained by unwelcome arrivals and it will become a sticking point in politics. Wealthy migrants will also have a less obvious but no less important impact. You see, in the modern world, highly skilled individuals are an economy's most valuable resource. The quote brain drain of losing your best and brightest to other countries has a serious impact. To show just how important skilled workers are, we only need to look at Russia's European neighbours. As orders for mobilisation reached the Russian people, skilled workers fled the country and settled down abroad. This has brought economic booms to their host countries at the cost of Russia's own growth, with Armenia in particular shattering expectations. So this just seems like a massive challenge we have to to overcome. But it's time to discuss the next geopolitical challenge. Humans will be back on the moon with the United States' Artemis program routinely going to the surface from a station in orbit called Gateway. SpaceX is also planning a Mars landing. This means in our lifetimes we will have a permanent population of humans on other celestial bodies. Now I know until now we've been rather cooperative about space, but realistically this will change with permanent population bases and so on in outer space. This brings a whole host of challenges. Will there be borders on the moon and Mars? Will we have defense programs and therefore weapons in space? If we do have borders, how do we determine who gets what? Previously, only Russia and the US were competing in the space race, but this time around, China will also become a prominent player, with its own goal of landing humans on the moon by 2030. It's a tough one to predict, so I'd love to hear what you guys think will happen here, but personally, it seems inevitable that geopolitics and some sort of borders will have to be put in place. But there are more pressing issues than space. I mean, Chinese and American animosity is reaching a boiling point over the island of Taiwan. Let me just Quickly explain. For the first half of the 20th century, China was an unstable mess, where two political parties rivaled each other to run the country. The Communist Party, known as the CCP, and the Nationalist Party, also known as the KMT. After World War II, a civil war broke out between the two, and the Communists finally won in 1949, forcing the Nationalists to escape to the island of Taiwan. The KMT appealed to the United States to defend Taiwan to prevent the spread of communism. Tensions have remained ever since, with China desperate to finish the job and conquer Taiwan. Every year, things seem to get more heated with Chinese threats, military drills and close calls. And by 2045? 
nothing will have changed. You see, China might want Taiwan really badly, but it's not a smart strategy. China has gotten rich off of trade with the US and the rest of the Western world, and giving that up for an island that realistically has little to offer would be ridiculous. And that's without mentioning the human cost of the war and the presence of nuclear weapons. Because of this, we expect China to simply wait for the US to lose interest in defending the island. Initially, the US-Taiwan alliance was ideological, but lately it has been more transactional. You see, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or better known as TSMC, has become the world's leading factory of modern microchips, a story we've definitely all heard of before because these are extremely valuable and we had a shortage of them not too long ago. These things basically make modern technological and military devices possible, so protecting them is a no-brainer. However, the US also doesn't want their source of chips in danger of attack, so they've been attracting chip manufacturing stateside. As local production grows, the US becomes less dependent on the little island, so its willingness to fight over it might falter too. It really depends on the stance of future US presidents and Congress, which we obviously can't predict. Also, while attacking Taiwan isn't smart from a geopolitical perspective, it doesn't mean China will give up. You see, China has been fostering extreme nationalism in their school system, raising a generation of young people that see China as perfect and superior. In their eyes, the Taiwan issue is an embarrassment that cannot stand. So would the government buckle under the pressure to act? Well, only time will tell, but it's very unlikely due to how incredibly severe the fallout would be. The conflict dominating today's headlines though is the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and once more, only time will tell how it plays out exactly. However, we know that Russia won't come out of it as a global power. Its military proved to be outdated and poorly trained, its energy leverage over Europe has vanished, and its economy has been hit with record sanctions. While inflation rates have been trending downward in the States, globally it hasn't been beaten just yet. Nearly a month has passed since Russia pulled out of the Black Sea grain deal and in that time, the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization has already reported an increase in its food price index. The region is still feeling the effects of the Ukraine invasion months before what could be a pivotal winter season, where dependence on importing LNG leaves the region vulnerable to volatile fuel prices. Gas prices are already fluctuating after a potential strike in Australia. Millions of people could face food or energy insecurity this winter. You may find it harder than ever to get by and even harder to get ahead, but there are still opportunities out there to help make your money work for you. One major investment has already surged past its pre-pandemic highs, the fine art market. And now you have priority access to invest in contemporary art, in minutes for a fraction of the cost thanks to our sponsors at Masterworks. Masterworks uses decades worth of auction data to find and purchase blue chip art they believe will appreciate in value. Now, I have not invested yet, and as with any investment, performance of realized exits is not representative of artwork that has not yet sold and is not indicative of future results, which may be lower, but their 15 sales to date of their over 300 offerings have all returned profits to their investors. So it's easy to see why over 790,000 people have signed up. So skip the waitlist for Masterworks today at the link in the description and start your journey in the world of art investment. Alright, so back to the video. Russia will probably end up as a second-rate power firmly in the grips of Chinese influence. They simply have no other option. They don't have the GDP to trade as equals with China and their alternatives are limited at best. In fact, some argue this has already happened with French President Emmanuel Macron calling Russia a Chinese vassal. Now, that's probably an exaggeration, but it goes to show Russia's fall in international standing, which they won't regain in the coming decades. They might be on their way up by then, but they simply do not have the economy to turn it around and compete with the global powers by then. Besides that, the rest of the world will feel pretty familiar. The US and China will likely be the top powers with no clear winner, both with incredible militaries and economic might, trying to outdo each other in a hostile but non-violent race. The European Union and India will probably become middle powers, with India growing to replace China as the world's factory. You see, wages are rising in China, and tariffs make their exports less competitive, and that has already started an exodus. This will not stop, it will just increase as China becomes a land of innovation rather than the land that produces the innovation
nations of others. More nations will rise because of this, with Vietnam, the Philippines and Mexico becoming regional powers. For our American viewers, Made in Mexico is a label that you will be seeing a lot more of as they leverage their free trade agreement and vicinity with one of the world's superpowers. So while this will probably be what the coming decades will look like, at least geopolitically, there are some possibilities that everything could change, which is where it starts to get interesting, and also a little absurd. The first is the collapse of the United States democracy, which might sound completely crazy, but it is a real risk. I mean, you don't need to look any further than the January 6th insurrection, where protesters attempted to do this very thing, to prevent President-elect Joe Biden from taking office and maintaining Donald Trump for a second term against the will of the people. Yes, they failed, but the plot had unprecedented support Support, both from the public and within the government itself. Even after its failure, there have been repeated and deliberate attempts to both justify and downplay the events. While writing this video, news broke that Donald Trump has been indicted for his actions surrounding January 6th and the plot of election interference that preceded it, so we hope that America's institutions have held. But the sentiments and collaborators remain. This could happen again, and their failure isn't guaranteed. Thomas Homer Dixon, Canadian political science professor and founding director of the Cascade Institute, writes that, quote, by 2025, American democracy could collapse, causing extreme domestic political instability, including widespread civil violence. By 2030, if not sooner, the country could be governed by a right-wing dictatorship. We must not dismiss these possibilities just because they seem ludicrous or too horrible to imagine. But another unlikely although severe possibility is terrorists acquiring Pakistani nuclear weapons. You see, Pakistan has been in crisis lately. A debt crisis triggered a political crisis as the popular prime minister was ousted from power, with factions across the nation taking various sides. And there are many factions. Just take a look at this. It's a map of Pakistan's ethnic groups, and as you can tell, there are many, and they spill out of Pakistan's borders. This is a consequence of British colonialism, which forced different people to share a nation. The country is also bitter rivals with their neighbor India, having fought wars and currently in the middle of an ongoing border dispute. This created the breeding ground for extremism and terrorism with 15 separate terrorist groups identified on a 2022 US Congressional Research Service report. All of this was compounded even further by devastating floods in 2022 that destroyed billions in infrastructure and affected more than 10 million people in regions that already were in severe poverty. And in the middle of all this crisis and instability are over 160 nuclear warheads that nobody knows where could end up if the country collapses into civil war, with the worst possibility being terrorist groups. So yeah, we have a lot of real catastrophic possibilities lurking in our future. But that's it for this video. Let me know if there are some major upcoming geopolitical challenges that we didn't cover or that you thought of. I'd love to see them in the comments. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.